before I get to some business planning ideas, I want to put you through a personal goal exercise. Okay, you'll need a pad, you'll need a pen. Um, and I want to put you through a personal goal exercise to make you think about your goals. It's eight questions specifically catered to you as a person. Okay, so when I do a lot of like coaching or retreats, or we've got several people coming to spend the day at our office tomorrow from wherever um, for an HQ day is what we call it. I'm sitting down and spending time with people and I'm thinking about their business and their future and what they want. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you eight things and I want you to also, I'm gonna take, the, or take our time because I also want you to put an answer down for every one of them. It could be first instinct and you don't like the answer, but just put it down anyway. You can change it later, right? Number one, what do you want more than, and this is a personal goal exercise, so you can write whatever you want. What do you want more than anything else? What do you want more than anything else? Some of this is not gonna be easy, by the way. Some of you are like, dude, I've never thought like this. Nobody's ever asked me this stuff. This is really difficult. I can't imagine actually writing an answer. You can spend time this weekend, right? But what do you want more than anything else? You had to think about it. Like, what do I really, really, really want out of this whole thing, you know? I could write a lot of stuff naturally, right? And I write down my goals every day. So this is, you know, when you start getting that habit, it's amazing too, when you write your goals down every day, the amount of things that you can accomplish and how much farther you can go just by reminding yourself every morning, here's what I'm focused on. Here's what I'm focused on. Here's what I'm focused on. Like I wrote down that I was gonna make hundred grand at 20 and I wrote it down every day. And I, what I didn't tell you is I hung up that little paper that I wrote up and signed I hung it up in my cubicle and I looked at it every day and I rewrote it down every day, every single day. Like you do that enough, you will trick yourself into thinking that you should be making six figures eventually. I'm telling you, it's a huge confidence booster. It's not an ego thing either. It's just, hey, I, I wanna focus on what I wanna focus on. Number two, this may be hard too, but when will you know that you've got number one? At what point will you know? And some, some of you are like, well, yeah, that's, that's really difficult. What, at what point will you know that you've achieved number one of what you want more than anything else? And some of these I ask generically because I don't want to really steer you one way or another. I want you to think of your own thoughts. I don't want to like position it, right? Or, or change it or push you in one direction or another. Uh, number three, what are you the absolute best at? It's funny, it takes us a second to say what we're really good at, but if I, used, if I ask you to write your weaknesses, you could list a laundry list. <laughs> but it helps in life to know what I'm really good at because, for example, most people don't know this, but in a business, I believe, as, a, as someone running a business, someone, and you're selling insurance, you're running a business, you should be focused on doing three things every single day and you do nothing else other than those three things. You're like, which means maybe you gotta put yourself in a position where you hire an admin at some point or an assistant or something, right? But what I do is I am, number one, I'm promoting every single day everything that we're doing. Number two, I'm connecting with top people in the industry, right? And then number three, I'm focused on collecting revenue. So I'm focused on our sales teams and collecting revenue and pushing revenue. But it comes from, but the revenue a lot of times comes from promoting and connecting. So for me, when I think about Mark, he talked about team building culture, and I can feel it by the way, like the, the, you can feel the culture is better here than it is most places, which is really cool. That's a testament to him, which is really awesome. If you think about that, what should he really be doing all day, every day, right? And I'm not just putting words in his mouth. I don't know what it is, but it's probably, it's probably promoting this place, right? Building up the team and spending time making people better that are inside of the organization, right? I don't know what it is, right? Connecting with leaders in, in the community, I don't know. But for him, I know that he's, this thing is getting cool enough and big enough that he's not selling insurance every day anymore, right? And if he did, it would actually slow down the growth, so he shouldn't. Okay, number three was what are you absolute best at? Number four, what are you weak at? Okay, what are you not good at? There's certain things, like if you're like, I'm not good at making calls. Well, you gotta make calls, <laughs> right? Like I'm not saying you can, well, you could delegate that, I guess, but um, I did a little bit of delegating that early on, but I also did a lot of it too. Like I didn't just delegate it just because I didn't want to do it, right? But uh, for example, I'm not planning all of our events. I'm not doing all the ads. I'm not always doing all the sales. I'm not, you know what I mean? Like there's a lot of things in, in, in business 
that I'm like, for example, if you could, do you think you would write more business if you didn't have to do any of the admin, any of the turning in applications, any of the follow up, any of the checking on pending, any of the client service work, any, of, you know what I mean? You, you get the idea, like imagine how much more you can produce if you get rid of a bunch of the stuff that a salesperson technically shouldn't be doing. Okay, what are you weak at? Number five, what do you do that is the biggest waste of your time and it doesn't have to be business related by the way, okay? What do you do that is the biggest waste of your time? You got it quick. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's the scrolling fingers strong. There you go. Okay. Dude, dude, TikTok is a time suck for me. Okay. It's killing me. My wife got rid of it. I I I I need to get rid of it, but I also want to post on TikTok. But when I get on it, I'm like, dude, 45 minutes later, I'm still watching flipping TikToks. What am I what, what am I in this? Twilight zone, like what's going on over here, you know? It's crazy. You get going and Yeah, yeah. It is. Okay, number six. I'm actually gonna have two for this one. What are you not doing that you should be doing? Okay, not doing but should be. Not doing but should be. The opposite of number six is, and I want you to keep it on number six and answer tw two different things, two different items. First was, what are you not doing? Second is, what are you doing that you should not be? But make it different than the time waster answer. Like the first one was, what, am I, what are you not doing that you should be? Let's make another answer for the same question of, what are you doing that you should not be doing? Okay, make sense? A lot of times we know the answers to a lot of the problems that we're facing. Um, I, instead of just giving you the answers, I like you finding it by me asking questions instead of me just telling. And then when someone finds it themselves, they're more likely to adapt or change or use the answer because they found it instead of giving somebody else credit for finding it, right? Okay, number seven. What is your target for 2022? What's your goal? Because you definitely can't build a business plan without one. And really, why is that the goal too, by the way? Like, why is that the actual target? Just because it sounds cool? If, if you haven't made a six figures yet and you're like, hey, dude, it's 100 grand. Is it because it, 100 grand is like, what everyone wants to make when they get insurance. So that's like the number everybody says. Or is it because, or you're like, dude, I'm making 400 grand. It needs to be a million bucks. Okay, great. But what, like, what is it for you? But really, why is it? Is it because that's what you want it to be? Or is it because what, that's what you think Mark wants it to be? Or that's because you think that's what everybody else thinks it to be? Or that's what you just thought it should be, right? Number eight, what are three things, this is gonna be tough. What are three things that could hold you back from hitting that target that you just set? What are three things that could hold you back from hitting that target? If you're selling insurance, not getting in front of people is always an easy, natural answer, right? Like the reason I had somewhat, some decent success in, in my first year, really, it's not really the, act, it's, it's the activity, but I had, all I did was I set 15 plus appointments every week. I sat with 10 plus and I sold five plus every week. I, I just followed that and I did it. And it was weird, I made a couple grand a week every week. So you gotta figure out what that is for you, right? And it varies by product, okay? I, I was selling like small life insurance stuff. I wasn't selling, you know, I wasn't building a renewal stream, okay? So you gotta take that into account. I know some of you are focused on that. So number eight, what are three things that could hold you back from getting, from hitting your target? Okay, good. If you love this video, you know I got another one that you're gonna love. I got a video just to your right, right here. Click on that, it's gonna be amazing. You're gonna love it. And I'll see you in there. Which objection do you think agents struggle with the most um, early in a call? Um, I'm curious what, I, I, what you guys are, are, are thinking, by the way, too. You Feel free to comment.